OK. OK, so yeah, today will be our first section uh, of my uh, knowledge sharing section. So and before we start, I have a question for you guys. And oh, uh, do if you want, you can turn off the front light to to see the screen clearly. So, uh, so uh, I guess you all uh have had pizza, right? So, and there are basically two types of pizza. One is with the uh, crispy crust and the other one is with the cheese stuff crust and how many of you guys are into the cheese stuff crust okay that's great because yeah I, I i actually like that one than than the crispy one i don't like people that likes the top one. Oh, if they like the top I don't want to talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, I mean, well, cheese, is, like a mouthful of cheese is more satisfying, right? Yeah, and yeah. So uh, let's say you are having an interview of, uh, of the product manager in a pizza chain company and interviewers tells you that you are going to run a store that can accommodate six pizza machines. And there are two types of pizza machines. Machine one can make pizza A with crispy crust, and machine two can make pizza B with cheese stuff crust. And, and making pizza one costs 280 grams of dough, and pizza two costs 180 grams. Both pizza can be made in 30 minutes. And let's say the net profits for making pizza one, so that's $21 is 6.5. Another is 4.5. Assume that 3,000 grams of dough are produced every hour. The question is, how many machine A and 2 should you purchase so that your store can have maximum net profits per hour? So here's the question. Uh, can, we, can we see that? Oh, oh, hi, Professor. Oh, I wish I, I appreciate your appearance. Yeah, uh, so I'm uh, leaving not too long, but sorry. Oh, at least I'll be here for you. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I forgot yeah. to switch my slides over here. Yeah, I, I, I switched on, on Zoom. So, uh, yeah, my bad. Sorry. Yeah, so here's the question. Uh, it's my country. <laughs> Uh, people in the Zoom, if you have any idea, you can just say it. So what do you guys think? Well, instead of reading a bunch of words, we can translate these words to math language, right? And, oh, uh, by the way, uh, I might correct my mistake for last week. Uh, the, the module we are looking at today is actually called linear programming, not linear regression. I'm sorry, I apologize that I mess up uh, the meaning of these two because actually linear regression is one kind of algorithm, but linear programming is one kind of uh, math models. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep, and to solve out this question, I will introduce the main characters for today. That is uh, linear programming. So, First, we can assume that 
uh, X1, uh, we, we, we purchased X1 uh, machine one, and we purchased uh, X2 machine two. And Y is the net profit per hour. And in the frame of linear programming, we have two things. One is objective function. The other is constraint. So for the objective function, that gives me the outcome, which is the goal of the problem. So the objective function is to figure out the net profit in this case. Since we uh, uh since we make P sub one uh with oh, oh sorry, uh since the net profit for making P sub one is 6.5. And in an hour, uh, we can produce two pizza one, right? Because making pizza one, oh, sorry, uh, because both pizzas can be made in 30 minutes. And in, so the net profit for making pizza one in an hour should be 6.5 times two times x1. And similarly, we have 4.5 times two times X2 here. And for the X1 and X2, we have uh, academic words for them and they are called as decision variables. And so here, this is our objective function. That is Y equals to 13 X1 plus nine X2. And what's the meaning of constraint? Constraint is, oh, so I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot to change uh, in the room over here. Okay. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Yeah, thanks for a reminder. So, yeah. So we have, uh, probably I should zoom in. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And for the constraint, that is the uh, limiting condition. And based on the question, based on the question, the question is how many machine one and two should, uh, should be purchased, which means I cannot just purchase all machine one or machine two. And uh, also, it is not a wise decision to change your machine that your boss gives you. So we have to buy both of them uh, with different different amount. So uh, X1 should be greater than one. X2 should be greater than one. And we also have a limiting condition on our thoughts because Every uh okay here so uh three thousand grams of dough are produced every hour, and making pizza costs dough so. And for oh 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 no okay. Does it make sense, guys? Yeah. You should stop him asking me. <laughs> oh yeah yeah it, uh yeah so I'm so sorry uh so if if uh if you guys have any question just. Uh, interrupt and ask me. So, so far, so good? Yes, so far. Okay, okay, okay great. So, and for, and we have a uh, limit. Let's stop for a second. So, why is he saying this thing about 280 times 2x1 plus 180 times 2x2 is less than or equal to 3000? Why do you think he's saying that? Because me? No. <laughs> I, I know you. People that I don't know, I, I try to get a feeling of how much makes sense. Yeah. Um, so why, why why did I get that uh, in angle the quote? Uh, the reason why, like, here's the way I interpret it. The reason why it's um, less than or equal to 3,000 because we, is because 3,000 is, is the maximum that it can be produced every hour. And then, um, and then, you can, can you go back to like one? Sure. Hour? And then basically based on his equations, his y equations, the objective functions. Um, if we add um 280 times two uh x sub one plus 180 times two x sub two, um what does this stand for? Uh 
So basically, the um, the third line is uh -huh. basically the basic sort of range. This expression third. here, yes. It's what it. does it represent? Um, the maximum um, um, the per hour of each machine can make. That's mm -hmm. what I'm interpreting. Here. This is the amount of dough that the dough right. 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 This guy makes each pizza needs 280, yes. and he's making two per hour yes. times the amount of this kind of pizza. Right. And, so, and you can be more than 3,000 because that's how much dough you get. Yes, right. Yeah. And also, uh, we have uh, x1 plus x3 equals to 6. Because obviously, uh, we, we we have to fit those six uh, positions for the machine, right? What's the six? Where is the six coming from? Uh, here. So in the question, uh, so... Uh, they have six yeah, I, so here. So uh, an interviewer tells you that you are going to run a store oh, that six, can six, accommodate six pieces of machines. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have a uh, six a uh, position for the machine, and yeah, to have the maximum uh net profits, obviously we should fill out all those position, right? Yeah. So, and for for the first three uh equation here, we call it uh inequalities, and for the last one, we call it equalities. And the reason why this module is called linear programming is that all e equalities and inequalities are linear. And what's the meaning of linear? Uh, at this point, you can comprehend it as straight. So uh, if, if I give you, uh, where's my pen? Okay, here's my pen. So uh, if I give you like, let's say, we, we all know that y, let's say y equals to x. It's a straight line, right? Uh, how about the y equals to x to uh, x square? Uh, is a parabola, right? Parabola. It's not straight. Right. So, uh, you can uh, comprehend this in a little tricky way. You can just focus on the power of your decision variables. They are all one. I mean, like highest degree one of all variables, right? The highest degree of all the variables in this one is just the power of one. Uh, I mean, all one, all yeah. equals to one. We cannot have negative one. We cannot have uh, two. we cannot have two. We cannot have three. Uh, if that equals to zero, it's just a constant. Yep. Yep. So uh, there's no such as x square, x cube, or x to the negative one. So to solve out this problem, the question can be translated to the following uh, math language. And given y equals to 13 times x1 plus 9 times x2. And here's uh, the uh, limiting condition. And we need to figure out the y max. And this is very common when you solve uh, math modeling problems. We need to translate all those words into math language to make the process neat. So uh, yeah, so here's the um, translated question. So how to solve it? Do you guys have any ideas? So first I have a question for you. Oh, uh, is someone talking? Hello? Oh, oh yeah, never mind. So uh, my first question is, what is this? What is y equals to 13 x1 plus 9 times x2? What's the meaning? I mean, what's the uh, graphic meaning of this equation here? We all know that uh, we all know that y, if I give you, uh, maybe I should say uh, x2, if I give you x2 equals to uh, let's say two times x1. You know that this is a straight line, right? With a reference consists of uh, x2 and x1, where the x1 is the x-axis and x2 is the y-axis. You know that this is uh, 
x2 equals to 2 times x1. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry for the people on Zoom because I, I forgot to download uh, the Zoom on my uh, iPad. So uh, probably you guys couldn't see what uh, what I am writing now. Uh, yeah, I apologize that. Uh, but next time I will download a Zoom on my iPad so that uh, you guys can like get it. We can turn on this camera and they can see it there. Oh, okay. Uh, if you have a way to connect, which you don't. Uh, here? Uh, you mean this cable? Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, this, this, you know what? It, it's fine. Yeah, I, I, yeah I'll figure out uh, yeah. next time. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Sorry about that. Uh, so, uh, so, but this in, uh, in the two dimension field, right? Uh, X2 equals to two times X1. Okay, then how about in three dimension words? In effect, I can create a reference like this, and this is my y axis, this is my x2 axis, this is my x1 axis. And the, the graph I draw here is projected here. And this is a uh, x2 equals to 2x1. However, we actually have another variables. That is y. Do we have any uh, constraint on y? No. <laughs> Which means we can actually expand or you can think it like copy and paste of on our line over here and that will give me a plane do you guys follow that so the y uh of course uh we will have different uh coordinates in our uh, question here, but y equals to 13 x1 plus nine times x2 actually give me a plane. You can, you, you, you can imagine that. So uh, this is also like uh, one of the little idea about the scaling method I learned last time. You can imagine that, let's say, assume that y equals to zero. 0 equals to 13 times x1 plus 9 times x2, which can be written as x2 equals to negative 13 times x1 over 9, right? That gives you a, a line. But with, uh, at the, uh, uh, with the y equals to 0, so how about y equals to 1? Then we just shift it. We shift it from this is y equals to zero and this is y equals to one. We just shift it from here to there. And if we do this in an infinite uh infinity times, that actually gives me a plane. So and also uh if we copy and paste infinity times on a straight line, that will give me a plane, right? So how about uh, the graphic meaning on this constraint? So how about the graphic meaning on this constraint? So that actually give me some closed region. So let's say this, uh, we still keep the same reference. So what's the meaning of x1 greater than one in this graph. So let's say one is here. So any spaces, any spaces that uh, is greater than, uh, that, that x1 is greater than one, which is the region over here, follows that constraint. And the same for x2 greater than one. So how about the uh, 560 times x1 plus 360 times x2 
is less than or equal to 3,000. What does that tell me? So basically, you would go x would be any any value less than 3,000. It's basically we're going this way, the opposite, right? Mm. So first, uh, if I if I write like uh y, if I make it like y equals to five hundred and sixty times x one plus three hundred and sixty times x two, what does this tell me? Recall the uh what I just said over here. I'm sorry. Uh, recall what I just said over here. This also gives me a plane, right? Uh, however, I don't. I don't need to know how the plane looks like. Uh, I just uh, graph it like in a rough way. Let's say here's the plane. You know, vertical plane? Uh, vertical plane? It is a vertical plane. It's a plane that is going straight up. Um, it's sort of hard to draw, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, uh, okay. if, if this is, sorry, if you're on Zoom, you're not going to see this. If this is x1 and this is x2, 2x1 is equal to x2 is this line. And then y is free, so you go straight up. Yeah. And you end up with this vertical plane on which you can graph. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah. I, well, I I yeah, it, it sometimes it's very hard to how to draw it like in uh because I'm not a, a painter, so I'm 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 so not good at drawing. Yeah. But however, I know how to use my computers. So later I will show you how to visualize it very well with the help of computers. And so basically the meaning uh, on our third constraint is the region below that plane. And uh, here we have uh, X, X1. Uh, thank you, Professor. Thank you, thank you very much. Yep. Next week I'll stay. Oh, watch out. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, uh, uh, he's my professor in linear algebra class, uh, which I'm taking now. So yeah, I appreciate his appearance. And yeah, okay, uh, where are we? Okay, yeah. Uh, so for the third constraint, uh, that actually give me the region that is below that plane. And for the, well, uh, x1 plus x2 equals to six, well, then that's it. Uh, it is what it is. So, so if we really want to uh, want want to solve it by our hands, we can we can show it like this. So we will have. Ah. Uh, okay, that's good enough. Okay, so we will have. Uh, y equals to this, and we have a bunch of constraints, and this one is the 2D plane, and this one is the vertical plane, and this means region below the plane on this. And if I use a graphic calculator, I will have this. So the red plane, uh, the red plane is the graph of our objective function. And for the uh, little the light blue one is the, the region below the plane. And for the purple one is the vertical plane over here. And we need to figure out, and if we have uh, two plane that cross to each other, that gives me a line. And if we have another plane, that will uh, limit that line, that uh, crossing line. So we need to figure out the maximum value on that line, on that uh, intersection. Well, how to solve it? Even though with the help of a uh, graphic calculator, we, we, we can visualize it, but we still didn't get the final answer of it. So how to solve it? Well, we can rewrite the fifth equation over here to this one, and then we can plug we can plug uh, six to one, two, three, four and get the simplified equation set and you can solve. And the process is, um, it's not hard, just with bunch of algebra and bunch of calculation. Well, 
with the development of technology, people who use technology get la lazier and lazier. And I'm also a lazy boy, so. So I don't want to solve that equation set, even though the process is not hard. Well, then what should I do? I'm going to use uh, a website called MATLAB. And MATLAB actually is one of uh, one kind of uh, computer science language. And yeah, so I'm going to solve it with MATLAB. And here's uh, other limitation of MATLAB. So first, MATLAB only can find a minimum value. Um, this is how the uh, inventor um, made on this principle. So the MATLAB only can find the minimum value. And the signs in constraints only can be either equals or less than uh, in MATLAB. So for this um, problem, now we can convert our original equation set. Since the MATLAB only can find the minimum value. However, the question is asked for maximum value. How to deal with that? We can just times a negative one for both sides. Oh, by the way, uh, do you guys have any question? So far? Good? Okay, great. Uh, how about the people in Zoom? Okay. No. Okay, yeah, great. Uh, so here, uh, also, you, you might feel weird uh, when you're looking at this equation. Uh, if you uh, haven't learned uh, computer science language, because y equals to negative y. What is that? It, it doesn't make sense in math. How come y equals to negative one unless y equals to zero, right? But here's what the uh, computer science language works. So the, the, on the right side, the y actually is your new y, not the old y. And on your right side, that is your OY. So let's say your OY is one. And if you plug it into this equation, you will give negative one back. So, so uh, well, your OY equals to, neg uh, sorry, equals to 13 X one plus nine X two, right? and you move out the parentheses, you will get, okay, your new y actually equals to negative 13x1 minus nine times x2. And for this bunch of constraints, for the third one and the last one, we don't need to change anything. But for the first two, since the MATLAB only can, uh, since the signs only can be less than or equals to, so we also need to convert it into this. So we just times negative one for the both side again, then you can get the signs we want. And I'm gonna use f to represent uh, the new y. So f equals to negative y. Oh, uh, for this part, so let's say I make f equals to this equation. And in MATLAB, uh, we need to use matrix to represent our function. And first, 
I'm gonna write it down here first and later I will explain why. So uh, f in this case, if what if f if f equals to negative 13 times x1 minus 9 times x2, then our f should be like a matrix, like a bracket, and we have negative 13 and negative 9. So where does that negative 13 come from? So that is from the coefficient of the x1. So you see over here, so the coefficient of x1 is negative 13. Then we place negative 13 at the top. And the coefficient of x2 is negative 9. So we place negative 9 at the bottom. And this is our f. And we do the same thing on the constraint. So for the first uh, inequality. I'm sorry. Yep. I'm sorry, but like, are, are you teaching a vector right now? Like how to plug the number into a vector and like calculate it or something? Uh, yes, but you don't need to actually calculate it by yourselves. I know, I know. It's about the knowledge of linear algebra, uh, which maybe most of you haven't taken that one yet, but you don't need to uh, like really know the, uh, I, I mean, of course, you, uh, you, you still need to know how those works, but uh, so far, the MATLAB actually can uh, Help uh, can actually do the operation for you. You only need to know how to like uh, translate this to matrix, and then the MATLAB will do the rest of the work for you. Uh, like I feel like it's better to uh, oh I know how to like use a vector, but like I feel it's probably better like um uh, to do it once, like if you try to times two vector or something. Just to, like explain how it works because I don't think that like everyone knows how to do that. So like, uh, I mean, it depends on like depends on depends on. Uh, honestly, we uh, oh, go ahead, oh yeah, I, I I will get you okay. later. Yeah. So honestly, uh, the uh what MATLAB did here is not just simple matrix multiplication. It's about uh, some advanced algorithms to, to support that the, the way, uh, okay, as you see, oh, sorry, uh, where, let me see. Oh, okay, here. Yeah, here's the, uh, how the code looks like in MATLAB. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, here. So here, how the code looks like in MATLAB. And the reason why this will give me the, uh, uh, in this case, it actually gives me the minimum, uh, the minimum value of Y because we convert our Y. And the reason why this uh, with the code language here, that can give me the minimum of Y value is very complicated. It's about the a lot of uh, advanced algorithm, and and so far I still cannot uh, comprehend that totally because that uh, I think those algorithm you might learn it in graduate school uh, if you major in computer science. And but we don't actually need to know that much deep. We we can just uh, oh sure sure yeah we can just know how. Uh, how to apply this because the logic behind oh, yeah, sure. logic behind is not just like simple oh uh the multiplication between two matrices is actually much complicated than that so oh sure i see yeah uh thanks for asking so uh yeah uh what's your question dad actually you're good. i'm okay oh you're okay you answered it um the notes made it clear to me oh yeah 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 because yeah, uh yeah uh yeah okay so uh okay we come back to the translation over here for the constraint so for the first uh inequality we actually have negative uh x1 right 
and we actually can write it into negative x1 plus 0 times x2. 0 times x2 is still 0, right? So I didn't change value on my uh, inequality. So for the first one, I can write it like in this way. So still same. Uh, the, the way how we uh, convert all those equations to matrix is writing down their coefficient for the for all the variables. So negative so the coefficient for x1 is negative one. So we place negative one over here. And the coefficient for x2 is zero. So we place zero over there. And uh, and similarly, we can uh, figure out this uh, the second row and the third row. And for the uh, equalities, we have x1 plus x2 equals to 6, which uh, give me that 1, 1 in this matrix, right? The coefficient of them are all 1. And here's the notation of the, uh, the symbol I wrote here. And the F, the F is actually means the transpose of the row vectors of the objective function. So first, uh, what's the meaning of row vector? Uh, yeah, I'm so sorry I couldn't uh, show you on the Zoom, but um, let me see. Uh, sorry, if that works like this. Let me see. Uh, probably, kind of, right? Okay. Okay, I will try to. Can people see? People in the Zoom? Yeah, it's kind of blurry. Okay. Uh, so. The row vector for the f looks like this. So the row vector is, looks like this. So this is called row vector, like a row. The row is horizontal, right? And uh, Coulomb is vertical. And what's the meaning of transpose? That means we rotate this stuff. So I can rotate this stuff like this. So that's the meaning of transpose. And like uh, to, to see it clearly, I'm gonna rewrite these two numbers. So, that gave me uh, so this is the transpose mean. So f is the transpose of the row vector of the objective function, and here is the a, meaning of a and b. Oh, by the way, oh, I think I I forgot to mention these two parts over here. So b b is the matrix consists of the constraint in inequalities. So uh, the constant are these, right? So we just place this to here. And for the equality, just six. So we just place it here. Uh, by the way, uh, in your videos or maybe your paper of uh, your math competition, you also need to make a table like this on your notation. Yeah. And, and here, uh, this is the, how the, uh, how the code looks like in MATLAB. So, we input F, A, B, A in inequalities, B equalities. And the part over here 
we call it invoking function. And for the part over here is the output that MATLAB gives me. So, uh, I mean, in this case, that actually will give me the solution of X and the corresponding Y, which is Y minimum. Because remember that we convert our Y to negative Y. So the question is ask for maximum of Y. Instead, if I can figure out the minimum, so if this one is minimum, which means this one is maximum. And um, yeah. And okay, so so here how the uh, code look like, and now I'm gonna show you how to implement that. Uh, you can you can just Google it, uh, MATLAB, and you can just uh so uh, but hold on let me change my screen. Uh, this one. Uh, I think I can just put this into here and then get this in so that people in the class can see clearly. Oh, wait. Okay, there you go. Ah. Okay. Uh. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, so here, so we can click the, okay. So here, is how the window looks like. And I'm gonna, uh, I can just, yeah. So uh, recall that F is the uh, Coulomb vector, not the row vector. And in computer science language, what's the meaning of Coulomb? Well, yeah, what's the, or maybe I should ask, uh, if I uh, plug a column over here, so what that, what is that doing actually? Yeah, right. We actually will shift to the next row, right? And that's why we, that's why a negative, oh, negative 13, nine here, is it actually represent the Coulomb vector, which is the transpose of row vectors. And we will have A equals to, uh, so the first row is negative one, zero, zero. Oh, sorry, negative one, zero, just zero, just one, zero. And the second row, before we type the second row, we need to type a cooler to shift to next row. So we will have the second row is negative, oh, sorry, zero, negative one, and that's it. And for the third is uh, 280 times two, 180 times two, And if I have uh, B, uh, oh, by the way, uh, the reason why I need to um, also uh, plug a column at the end of each row is to hide the, the value of this in my command uh, window. So, if I erase this column over here, then later there's a A value 
showing in the command value uh, window, but I don't I actually don't want to see the A. I just want to get my final answer, which is the Y. So I wanna I don't wanna well, I don't want it to show up. So and B equals to uh negative one negative one three thousand. And the same a EQ. Oh, uh, I don't think I can, I can share two screens at the same time on Zoom, right? I mean, it is better to, like, cause I what 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 I am doing now, just like uh, looking at the equation set I wrote before, and I just convert it into MATLAB, and that's it. So I have B equals to six. And this is the format of this algorithm. So I need to, so first create uh, X and Y, and that equals to invoking function, uh, lin linear programming, and parentheses. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. F. Oh. F. A. B. A. Equation and B equation. And I wanna since uh the y we have over here is the y minimum. The question is asked for maximum. So I convert it back. Y equals to negative Y. And let's see what happened if I click the run button. Something is showing in the command, win uh, command window. So the Y I got over here, hey, wait, uh, something is wrong, okay? Oh, okay, I see. Sorry, I forgot negative line. Yeah, okay, now let's run it again. Okay, so here, there you go. It's 70.8. And so as you can see, we actually can obtain the value for each notation in the workspace over here, over here. So the and the y means the uh, maximum net profits, right? So uh, with the help of MATLAB, we got the maximum net profit is 70.8. Is this correct? So what, what are my x? What are my x1 and x2? Do you know how to find it here? So where can I find the X1 and X2? Right, yeah, in the workspace. In the workspace, you see, so X equals to this. And uh, the MATLAB uh, write this down in a matrix way. And that's why linear algebra is so important for people who major in computer science, because uh, basically, all the equation behind computer, uh, computer science is matrix. So, uh, and the for the first one, this actually is the value for x1. And this is the value for x2. So, we, we actually have x1 equals to 4.2. And that means we need to purchase 4.2 machine 1. Does that make sense? No. How to, how, I mean, if I go to the store, can can the guy just chop uh, one fifth of a machine to me? Oh, basically you're saying it has to be a discrete value. Has to be integer, right? right yes, true. has to be integer. Yeah. So even though we got the solution with the help of MATLAB, we still need to like do some adjustment because 
MATLAB cannot uh, like really think like human being. Like, so we actually need to, uh, so now I'm gonna go back to the, I'm gonna go back here. <laughs> So since x1 and x2 are integer, and we oh, and we can run it like 4.2, we run it to 4. 1.8, we run it to 2, which means to have maximum net profit, we need to purchase 4 machine 1 and 2 machine 2. And then the net profit uh, here, uh, the way how we can calculate y is we can uh, have the uh, transpose of f times this matrix. And here's uh, the principle for multiplication for matrix. So if we multiply two matrix, we have to make this number exactly the same as this number. So, and by the way, uh, this is called a matrix one by two, which means it has one row, two columns. And that's the meaning of one by two. One by two, one rows, two columns. And the meaning of two by one is two rows, one column. And this can be multiplied. If I have, like, let's say, if I uh, don't have the little t over there, if I just have uh, two by one times two by one, it cannot be multiplied. This is based on the principle of multiplication in matrix. Or you can just calculate out the y, uh, directly use the equation we have before. So the y, so recall that, okay, here. So since the x1 equals to four, x2 equals to two, the net profit equals to 13 times four plus nine times two. So we actually got $70 for the net profit per hour. And that's how we solve this question with using uh, linear programming. So, uh, so far so good? Yep, so yeah, and this is linear programming. And yeah, and later I will uh, share the materials in the Discord. And basically, yeah, that's it. Well, but if you really have an interview for the product man manager, the question won't be that much easy. Yeah, because let's say, how did you calculate out the 6.5 net profits for making pizza one year? You don't know, right? This is given. Well, in reality, you actually need to figure it out by yourselves. Yeah. So, and yeah. And that will like, you need to consider normally about the cost of making pizza one. You also need to care careful about like maybe utilities or maybe other fees, artificial fees, something like that. And yeah, and that's it. And this is uh, what I wanna cover for today, linear programming. And later I will uh, share, I, I will upload the recordings on YouTube and if you have any uh, question, you can just ask me or uh, watch the video again. And I thanks for your appearance for today. And thank you guys. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, do people in the Zoom have question? Uh, if no, you are free to leave. Okay, great. Thank you, good day. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah uh, hold on, let me uh, stop.